Yes, based on my just reviewing our, my interview with him uh, the other day. Okay. All right, I'm gonna have you take, so, you don't recall testifying that uh, Mr. Mitchell actually never said anything about two shooters? I got a sneaking suspicion you're gonna show me that I did, but as I sit here, I don't recall that, no. You were able to review your interview with him, correct? Yes, I did. Okay, you still have that transcript in front of you? No. Oh, is this it? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. You could take a look and see if that helps refresh your recollection about whether he told you there were two shooters. It may or may not. Say. This is impeachment of what the officer previously said. I'll let you ask about whatever he previously said. Do you have a page or an area that I need to look through? Exactly, it's a long interview. No, sir. How many pages are we talking about? Can't see, maybe about 20. I can't see if that's right, it could be more. We, you know what, we can come back to it. We'll probably have a break and you can take a look and get back to me. Okay, sure. Cool. So when you went out to the scene at the time, um, you were looking to speak with other witnesses, correct? If there were any. Uh, originally, uh, when I first got to the scene, Yes. Okay. Yes. You were trying to speak with as many people as you could, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, and you had access to the cab reports and the 911 calls, correct? Yes. Okay. And you had access to the 911 calls themselves, correct? Eventually, yes, I did. Okay. And anyone you spoke with, you would have put that in your report, correct? Uh, not, uh, yes. Most of the people, uh, General information. I don't have to, I don't necessarily put all the details, but yes. Okay, but like their name, right? Not, not always. If, if they don't wish for the name to be included, if it's not, if I can, if I can exclude them, I will. Fair. But you never spoke to the 911 callers, did you? No. Even though you had their name and contact information, right? That's right. Even though you were aware that one of them wanted to speak to the police, right? If I was aware of that, I would have spoken with him. I'm going to approach you with what has already been previously admitted into evidence and marked as dates 1 and N, Nancy Nancy. Okay. Okay. And that is one of the cab reports you've reviewed, correct? Uh, it appears to be a cab report from the case. I can't say I reviewed it, but I, it does seem to be from the case, yes. So you didn't review the cab, so you did. Well, I'll look at it. I verify that it's got the right address on there, and if there's any information as the, as the case progresses, 
And if, it's, if I need to keep back in touch with anybody like a 911 caller, I would do that. Okay. So you, you didn't see the, the... And I would use the CAD report to get that number. Okay. And name. In this particular case, I didn't see the instance to it. Didn't need it. You didn't need to see the, the person who wanted to speak with you? I wasn't aware of that person. So you didn't review the CAD? I looked at the front page. I didn't read every word. No, ma'am. Okay. And so you didn't listen to the 911 calls? Uh, no. Okay. So if you're trying to speak to as many witnesses as you can, why wouldn't you speak to the 911 caller who wants to speak with you? Again, I didn't get the word that they wanted to speak with me. Or I would have. My plate was pretty full. I talked to a lot of people when I did a lot of work that day. Oh, okay. You were too busy. Yes, I was busy. Okay. So when Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Uden, no, let me back up. The photos of the 762 shells. You didn't take those, correct? I did not. Okay. Were they just sent to you? Is that right? Yeah, they were included with the report, yes. Okay. And so is it from those photos <coughs> you pieced together the 10 and N that you had drawn a line? You drew this line, correct? I did. Okay. And the this earth image or whatever it is, that accurately depicted the apartment complex as you observed it, correct? That's correct. Okay. So, and the, the, the line on the left side where it starts, that's your belief, that's where the 762 shell casings were. All right. I'm going to put up on the screen for you what has been admitted as 59NN. So, looking at 59 NN, mm -hmm. what is it you see next to kind of that entryway, exit way by the sidewalk to the building? Well, I see a satellite dish and an AC unit. Oh, AC unit. And then you were standing at that AC unit looking at the parking lot. What is to your right? The line of bushes? I, I'm, I'm turned around here. I don't understand what. If you're standing next to that AC unit with the AC unit on your right, you're looking at the parking lot. Do we have a line of bushes there? Yes. All right. Could you put back the 10 and then? So looking at 10 NN, officer, you said it was consistent. What happened to that line of bushes? It, they're not there. Okay. What happened to the AC unit? It's not there.
So how, how is that possible? Well, when I got the information from the officer, Bob memorialized what he told me, what he found. He said it by the Y building. I was assuming that that Y building was where I indicated right there. Oh, uh, okay. So you just map. assumed that. I did, yeah. Okay. Uh, in the same complex, the uh, picture with the shell casings is in the same complex. This, I, I think it's the, the next building back in that little courtyard. Okay. But so you didn't go out to the scene and see where those 762 casings were, right? I said that a couple times. So I you can't not. say for sure, actually, that 10NN is even where those were found, right? That's correct. Okay. I can say they came from the complex, but Fair. exactly where in the complex, I don't Fair. know. Fair. And with this image, I'm going to point you to um, that corner right there, right? Yes. That's where Miss Smith indicated one of the shooters was, correct? I don't recall that. Where do you recall she said the shooters were? She said, if, I were, if my recollection is correct, she saw somebody walk around the breezeway. Here? Yes. I believe, yes. Okay. So all those casings should be right there. Yeah, but there's the, the buildings are very similar oh. in design, mm -hmm. and there's two sets. So oh. the breezeway, they go through both sets of buildings. So they're, they're very similar. So, so it's, it's easily confused is what I'm saying as far as locations because the, the, the buildings look very similar. Okay. So you may have been easily confused, right? I was confused, yes. Okay. And Miss Smith, during the earlier parts of her interview, she had only talked about one shooter, right? I recall she said she saw somebody, someone with a long gun and she heard shots. I don't recall if she indicated whether there's more than one shooter or not. I don't remember that. Should I refer okay. to something? So what I'm um, earlier on in the interview, or when in her interview, I think you talked about, you know, she said some things which weren't consistent. Yep. And then you consoled her. Yes. And then she was more consistent after that, right? Yes. So when was it that she began telling you, back this up. At what point between those did she go from one shooter to two shooters? I, I know when she, she described to me, she said she described the two guys that she was with, and she described each one of them having a different kind of weapon. I don't recall. I recall that, but I don't recall if she stated that she saw anybody shoot. She just stated that she heard shots and ran. Okay. Saw, saw, saw both of them with the gun, with guns, but I don't recall if she said she saw them shooting. My question was, when in her interview, excuse me, before or after the consoling? It was after the consoling. Okay. Because before that, it was only one shooter, right? I knew that, that story she was telling me was crap, so I really wouldn't pay much attention to it. Okay. So I, I don't remember what okay. she said. And it was between the, or what was the consoling? Let me go there. What was what? When you consoled her. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm, I'm a husband and a father. I've got a daughter. Um, I just spoke to her in a fatherly tone, 
assured her of her safety, um, and calmed her down and encouraged her to tell the truth. Okay. But she didn't start doing that until after she was told to, I think, sing her ass off, right? I don't recall if that was said or who said it. You don't recall that? I'm not saying it wasn't said. I just don't remember who said it, yeah. Okay. And there were discussions during that interview about whether she was implicating herself, right? I don't recall. Whether she could be going home or not? I don't remember that. She wasn't concerned with, or didn't seem as though she was concerned about getting in trouble? She was concerned about getting in trouble, yeah. Okay. And so I want to Back it up. She came in. She's telling you a bunch of things. They're not adding up. You console her. And then she is telling you something consistent with the evidence, right? Uh, yes. Okay. But that part didn't happen until you... You were the first one to bring up that someone had a rifle, right? As opposed to just a small gun, right? I indicated that there were two types of shell casings, the rifle round and the small caliber. Okay. Before that, she had not described two types of rounds, correct? Without, I had, like I said, I haven't seen that interview in quite a while. I do not recall. Okay. You're the one who brought up a second person there to ambush, right? I described two types of shell cases indicating that it was two shooters, yes. Implication there is it's two shooters. Okay. So you made that implication and then we had two shooters, right? Yes. Okay. What more did you do to confirm what she was telling you? And what, do you have an example that she'd like me to answer? Because there's, she told me a lot. Right. She told you about different things that Mr. Mitchell did or Mr. Uten did, right? Yes. And those weren't consistent with what you would learn from them, right? Yeah, they were fairly consistent. Okay. So when you spoke to Mr. Mitchell, that's when you learned about him putting a gun to her head? Oh, yeah. She did say that about him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, that's the story it was, that was, and it was, I didn't believe her. So I, right, I forgot right. about it, yeah. So... It would make sense if she's telling you these stories that you would want to confirm them, right? If it's the truth, yes. Right. And she told you things about, well, let me ask you. You never went back to Mr. Uten or Mr. Mitchell or asked about whether everyone had been chatting together, like she told you, right? Well, no, they described in their interview that they had been texting with the girls. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant that everyone, the, the defendants, everyone came out and was chatting together before this happened. I don't think that came out yeah, with, the, with Mitchell and... Okay. Yes. All right. So they didn't say it. She did. But you didn't go back and say, hey, this witness told me this. No? no. Okay. And you didn't go back and look at her Instagram record. Right? I don't think so, no. So you couldn't confirm whether she said she'd been talking to the victim every day, right? So she, the victim. Um, no, I didn't. Okay. You could have, though, right? Because you said you got, you got a record. Or you ordered them? Did a warrant for them? Uh, yes. Okay. 
and she told you about a specific type of van that Mr. Ryan's mother drove, correct? Yes. You didn't go check and see if she actually had a van like that, did you? Yes. You did? Yes. And that's in your report? Uh, I don't think so, but I did do it. I noticed it. Let me go check. It might be in the report. We went to go talk to his mother. Mm -hmm. She was cooperative, right? She was. You didn't ask to search the van, did you? No. And that van would have been, based on what you were told, used basically as a getaway vehicle, right? Yes. So it could have a murder weapon in it, right? Yes. Could. Could have gunshot residue all over the steering wheel, right? No, unless it was shot from the car. Okay. Those wouldn't transfer from someone's hands? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But you didn't get a search warrant to check either of those things, did you? No. And within just a few hours, you had an address for Mr. Blaylock, correct? I did. And you didn't get a search warrant for that apartment either? No. So you made no effort to look for what would have been the alleged murder weapon, right? Oh, that's correct. Okay. That would have been useful, right? If you had that, that's great evidence. Uh, I've worked 100 murders and never got one. Never. Ms. Vasi, let's um, pause for a minute and take our morning break. And if you do, you want him to look at whatever that oh, sure. portion was while we break? Okay. All right. Sure. He's welcome to. And I'll, officer, I'll hand you your other transcripts and you can look at whatever you need to. And can I ask you to actually step outside if you don't mind? Oh, sure. Thanks. I've just got to deal with another matter. How about you start with whatever it is that you wanted him to actually, that you asked him on the stand about? Okay. I mean, you can give him all of them, but I'd like for him to start with the one that you specifically asked about. They'll be here. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so and um, there's been some back and forth about the whole Mitchell, that's its last name, right, thing. And um, Ms. Uh, Abbasi, you said that you kind of gestured in a vague direction towards the holding cell door at the end of the day without mentioning anybody's name and asked who the witnesses would be tomorrow which is now today, and um, the state's answer did not include either of those people. Um, and then, of course, there was some point in time in which the state was maybe going to get Mr. Mitchell, and I don't know what they were going to do, put him on the stand, just, I don't know, as a concession to Miss Abbasi, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, just FYI, um, Mr. Mitchell is here and available. I'm just letting y'all know that. And I kind of need to know before the lunch hour um, or whenever this next, you know, the witness that's on the stand right now is over with. Um, if he's going to be called, let's go ahead and call him next so that he can be whatever's going to happen and then transported away back to where he has been the, staying before this time. The issue raised on the defense is um, his messages would kind of affect what sort of road we went down with the defense. We've already gone down that road. I've, All right. The mistrial so, has been denied. There's no further, I'm no longer insisting at this point, he'd be called whatever damage has been done has been done. So working right. with what we have. Just wanted to let you all know. Okay, so then does the state want to call him. If not, tell me now and I'll have him shipped back. No, I think this line of hearsay questions has uh, cured any sort of uh, uh, 
you know, issue as it relates to a mistrial and uh, it confronting Mr. Mitchell since she's been able to do it without Mr. Mitchell even testifying. All right. Thank you. Let's take our break.